We all tend to think that Russia is just, well, Russia. It's a gigantic country, but there's nothing really interesting about it. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. This isn't just the largest country on Earth, it's also one of the most diverse and fascinating countries. In this episode, we stop right at the border between Europe and Asia and explore the province of Perm. Hello, and welcome to 7 Facts. Perm Krai is a federal subject of Russia, located on the western slopes of the Ural Mountains, where the two continents meet. 99.8% of the province is in Europe, while the rest is in Asia, so for all intents and purposes, this is a European region. It houses 2.6 million people, has astonishingly beautiful landscapes, and its climate is exactly what you expect – long snowy winters with bitterly low temperatures. But this isn't all there is to Perm. There's loads more to talk about, so don't go anywhere. Perm gets his name from the indigenous people, the Komi Permiaks. Although today they represent only 3% of the population, they have been living here longer than any other nation. They are a part of the Komi ethnic group, a branch of the Fino Ugric peoples. Thus, they are related to their neighboring Udmurts, Mordvins, Maris, but also Finns, Estonians, and Hungarians. Komis have been a thing on their own since the first millennium BC, so this is one of the oldest nations on the planet. Of course, Russian ethnics completely outnumber Komi Permiaks today. Nevertheless, they are still there, so if you want to learn more, Perm is one of the places you need to explore. The capital city of the Krai is the city of Perm, a major urban center of nearly 1 million people. Perm is a bustling modern city, with one of the biggest industrial outputs in the entire country. The Russian aircraft industry, rocket engineering and electric engineering all have a major foothold here. If culture is what you seek, you will find it here. Theaters, outstanding art galleries and a well-maintained historic center all await the visitor. And, as a special bonus, you get to walk in what is the last major European city on the eastern side. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. Right, with that said, let's go to fact number 4. Where have I heard this before? Perm or Permian, you might be wondering. Let me give you a clue. Ever heard of the Permian extinction? That refers to the abrupt end of the Permian geologic period. It was named after the region of Perm by Sir Roderick Murchison, who identified this period in his explorations of the province in 1841. The Permian era spanned 47 million years and ended 251.9 million years ago, with what is, as far as we know, the largest extinction event ever. This was the era when Pangaea existed and Siberia was a separate continent, an era when the early ancestors of mammals and archosaurs, including reptiles and dinosaurs, diversified. Then, suddenly, 95% of all marine species and 70% of all land species died out. It's also the only known mass extinction of insects. We're not sure what happened, but it's thought that the end came from Siberia. For thousands of years, huge amounts of magma poured onto the Earth's surface, in the area that is now Siberia, altering the atmosphere and increasing world temperatures by 5 degrees Celsius. This probably led to the melting of frozen methane reservoirs, increasing temperatures with an additional 5 degrees. Hydrogen sulfide gas, a toxic compound from the deep ocean floor, could have also risen into the atmosphere, destroying the ozone layer, thus allowing ultraviolet radiation to kill even more species. It took 30 million years for life on land to recover, well into the Triassic era, at the end of which the dinosaurs appeared. Perm Krai was home to one of the Soviet Union's most infamous forced labor camps, Perm 36. It was part of the prison camp system established by the former Soviet Union during the Stalin era, known as the Gulag. It operated for more than 40 years, from 1946 all the way to 1987. 
1972, the camp was converted into the harshest political camp of the country, housing political prisoners in 24-hour closed cells. Prisoners here have been tortured, abused and sometimes worked to death, because they dared to struggle against the regime. Perm 36 is today a museum and the only remaining example of a labor camp of the Gulag Agency. As I said before, the city of Perm is a big industrial hub. And there's a reason for that. While the city was already an industrial center even in the Tsarist era, its economy boomed during World War II. As the German troops were approaching Moscow and things didn't look well for the Soviets, Stalin ordered the evacuation of the major factories found near the border. Many military equipment plants and other enterprises of state importance were moved to the east, many of them to Perm. This way the Soviet industry could go on even though it seemed that they might lose the war. But because of this high concentration of state secrets, Perm unofficially became a closed city. This meant that foreigners were not allowed to come here and movement of citizens and goods was restricted and heavily controlled. Perm was even eliminated from many maps or intentionally put in wrong locations. This status was lifted only in the 1990s after the Soviet Union collapsed. Everybody had heard of the ancient Silk Road, but this wasn't the only important trading route in history. The Siberian route was a long historic route that connected European Russia to Siberia and China and one of the major stops was in Perm. The road was built in the early 18th century and was used until the last decades of the 19th century when the Trans-Siberian Railway was built. This route was also known as the Tea Road owing to the great quantities of tea that were transported from China to Europe through Siberia. Back then it was a common belief that the best tea produced in China was going to Russia. And it kinda was. 65% of China's tea exports were sent to Siberia. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.